Hello everyone, this is Shadowman, and this will be update 2 of my 8-bit Connects Mechanical Computer project. This episode will cover data transfer, mainly for the registers and the RAM. I will be covering how data is stored in the RAM and the registers, how it's read and written, and how it's presented to other parts of the computer. In the last video, I explained the ALU, that's this side of the computer, and so I'm not going to bother explaining how that works again. But I did mention these areas over here on this side, and this, this is all just to automate the reading and writing to the registers and the RAM. I did a brief overview of the registers in the previous video, but I'll go over that a little bit here. So we have eight bits going across and there are two registers for storing data to be processed by the ALU. And there's also one register called the sum register, and that is at the very top. The bottom two have these pins that you can push in and out just for debugging. The actual computer, of course, will run actual programs and you won't really have to mess with these. We will call the register on the bottom the B register and the one above that, which is in the middle, the A register. The data bus is, you guessed it, 8 bits, and that is represented by 8 linkages that are vertical. And there's one of them going up there. And these go all the way from the top of the computer to the bottom down there. And that's what will enable this RAM to be stacked as high as we want. This bus will allow any RAM or register to read a data value onto it. So if there's a 1 in that column, it would lift it up. And then another location will be able to read the position of this, whether it's down or up, and then write that into whatever storage location. And of course, in one operation, all of the data bits, all eight of them, will be set to either 0 or 1. First, let's talk about how the register read and write levers work. Right now, I'm at the left side of the computer, and this is the first bit. You can see that all of these registers look pretty much the same, so it has these sections and then the green connectors. I showed this in the last video, but here's one of the bits switching, so that's a 1 and that's a 0, and that goes all the way to the ALU on this side, and same with that one. And of course, the sum register isn't connected to anything except the result of the ALU. Reading data is pretty simple. We will just push this lever right here up. And of course, if a zero is stored like it is right now, nothing happens. And the data bus will stay down. But if there's a one stored there, then that will push on that, and now this data bus for this column is a 1. The write operation for the registers is a little bit more complex, but our goal is to take whatever's on the data bus, so the 1 or the 0, and get it to push the bit in the appropriate direction. To do this, there is kind of a T-shaped assembly, and pointing to uh, the yellow connector at the bottom of it, and that will rock back and forth and be able to push this bit to either 1 or 0, and that whole thing will slide forward. First, let's just set the data bus to 0 for this bit, and we can set the bit that's stored in the register to 1 so we can see it actually switching. And so I can, by hand, push this forward, and you can see it going that way and it just stored a zero into this bit. I'd say that the most difficult part to come up with on this computer were the registers, because this is like version three or four maybe. So to solve all those problems, I came up with this version, probably like version five or something. So this is what I'm using for the RAM stack. Right now there is only one byte of RAM, and you can see the separation right here where the registers end and the RAM begins, but I plan on having eight of these stacked 
in a computer, or in this one at least, there really is no difference between the RAM and the registers. So I just wanted to make it clear that the only reason they're different here is because they're just different versions of the same thing. So we are still storing eight bits of data all the way down. We have more of a flip-flop style bit storage. So this is a zero and that's a one. From this view, we can see a bit that's in the zero position and I could flip it to one like that. And to read, I can move these weights. These are really just a placeholder for now. And it does nothing if it's storing a zero and it goes by there. But if we store one, that connector will push that. And then the data bus, the data bus goes up. Here's a better view showing most of the data bus lines going up. To write data to the RAM from the data bus, I'm actually really happy with how I was able to do this because it does it a lot easier than the registers. What it will do first is when I slide this to the left, any bit that is a zero will flip over to one. And all the data bus right now is set to zero so all of these will flip back to zero. But if any of these data bus lines are set to one, we'll just do this first one over here. When I flip it, that one will actually fall down to the same position it goes to when it's being read. Then when we return it, it will stay up and it fell down right now because the bus isn't being reset yet. You have seen me pushing by hand all the levers for reading and writing to the RAM and register, but let's get into the fun part, which is the mechanical automation. We are now at the right side of the computer at the bottom, and I showed this area last time. This is where the ALU is powered, and the motor to that is down there. In order to read and write to these registers and the RAM, we have one motor used for reading, and then over here is the one used for writing. This area looks really complicated, but all it is is a crank that the motor turns and it rotates around 360 degrees and then stops. And that is done with these transmissions. When the crank goes up and down, it moves something like this. And that is the right to the RAM section. And then all of this other complicated looking stuff is just to select which register to write to or read to. This is the read motor and up inside here we have the crank that actually rotates. And the one for writing is closer to the edge. That's right here. Before the crank output gets to one of the RAM or register bytes, it has to go through two selection stages. And each stage, the first one is right here. You can see that switching, that will choose whether to go from RAM to registers or registers to RAM. To do that, we have this section here that slides back and forth. And it's either going to push down one side or the other, but never both at the same time. And in the middle of, of that, the part that's staying stationary, that's connected directly to the crank. It's more difficult to see the reed crank, but that's in here. You can see that going back and forth. After that, we gotta select which one of the registers it will actually read or write to, and which RAM that it will read or write to. And the RAM isn't finished yet at the moment, but we have this right here for the registers. You can see this switching right here between, right now the B register is active, so it'll write to that. And then if you flip that, it will write to the A register. And this same control is also used to switch for reading. That's right here. But with this one, it will either read from the A register, which is down there, or 
it will read from the sum register. And it doesn't read from the B register because it just makes it easier to only have two to select from, both for reading and writing. At the back of the computer now, let's actually show these motors and transmissions working. So these motors just spin continuously, even when nothing's happening. And right now they're not connected to anything. So to turn it on, we start with the read motor and we can just press this. You'll see that this part rotated around 360 degrees and this section right here keeps it from going too far. The write motor is pretty much the same as the read side except it happens on a delay so that it first the crank for the read goes around and then this crank for the right will happen afterwards. You can probably get a better view from this side. You can see that going around once. And because of the way this is selected, it will go up these linkages like this one right here and eventually get to where it needs to go. To do an actual data transfer, I've set those two control lines to what they need to be. And right now we're going to take what's in the RAM and store it into the A register. So I suppose we could just try 1101. It's easier to see from this side, except this over here is the least significant bit. So with all of these over here being zero, and then 1101, that's the number 13 stored in RAM. And just to confirm, both of the registers are all zero. So we can press this. Okay, so we can see that the appropriate bus lines are in the up position. And we can see that 1101 is in the A register. To go in the opposite direction from the A register back to the same RAM, we can reset the bus, Let's make all these up here be zero, and then we'll have to flip this control line and just turn it on again. All of these are reset back to 13. In the future, those two control lines that are used for data transfer and also this lever that activates the whole process will be automated by the instructions that come out of ROM. The ROM, or read-only memory, will be back here in this area, and it'll be at the same level as the RAM. It'll be pretty similar to it, except it won't need the write section since it's read-only. It'll just have to have this part that reads to the bus. Like I said, the selector for the RAM isn't finished yet, but right here we have what you can push in and out to either read and write to this byte of RAM or one of the ones that will be above it. For now, it's not connected to anything, but we can see the selector down here. Right now it's off, so pushing this up won't go to that. But if it's in, it'll transfer over to there. And that's for the write. And the read operation is pretty similar. It looks pretty much the same. Selecting which byte of RAM to perform the operation on, however, is a little bit more complex than the registers because for the registers, there's only two. So it can just be that swivel linkage that I showed over there. But for the RAM, we'll need something more like this. This will be a 4 to 16 selector, even though for the RAM it will only have 8 possible outputs. So we can take 4 inputs that will go from 0 to 15, and whichever one of these is down is the one that's active. In its default position, all of these are down, so that's 0, 
So this first one is selected. If we bring that up and make it one, then the second one here is selected. And that will happen if we put different binary values into these four inputs. So two would be one zero, and that will let that one go down. And if we push these first two up right here, that's a three, that will have the one at the top go down. And this down here is actually in reverse, so this over here is the least significant bit. That'll make it easier to integrate into the ROM. This is only a quarter of the way it will need to be. It will eventually have 16 of these outputs, and so it will be able to utilize all four of these inputs. You know what? I decided to just build the second RAM so we can see what two RAM slots look like. It's pretty much just the same as the one below it. I've also gone ahead and attached the 4 to 16 selector to the back here. Here's what I'm doing with the counterweights that are at the end. I have to stagger them like this just so they fit, since we only have a blue rod of height for every RAM module. Here is how the 4 to 16 selector is attached to each of these. It's just attached right here. We can see right now that by default the bottom is selected and all the others are in the up position. And at the top, I can push one of them up. And we select the second rim slot when I do that. So we can see it's switching from here. And I also went ahead and reversed this top part. So over here is the least significant bit. So that's a one. And that's a two, and that's three. And of course, if you select something like two for now, it will deselect both of the RAMs. In the next video, I'll have the ROM started, so we'll cover that. And we can also cover how jumps are going to work. The jump section is going to be right here. And also cover how the program counter works. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.